Hello, lovely internet strangers. Today, come along with me as I scroll down my real person Twitter because I hate myself. This is a process I go through on a regular basis and I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along so you can share in my frustration. These are things that don't really merit their own video, just things that I want to be able to exclaim and rant about. So we'll see how this goes. Oh my God. So this isn't someone that I know, but it was retweeted by someone that I know, someone who is an author. The PewDiePie issue is complicated because on the one hand, He's emboldening white nationalist mass murderers, but on the other hand, he's awful and offers humanity nothing of value. Give me a fucking break right now. His Twitter bio says, I write for TV and movies and I've read the entire internet more than five times. And his last tweet was, honestly wish I could cryogenically freeze myself until at AOC is old enough to run for president. So that gives you an idea of the kind of person that we're working with here. So this is a tweet that was liked by an author that I follow. Did you tweet about Egg Boy or Chelsea Clinton today? Make sure to keep attention and concern on the lives and legacy of the Christchurch victims, their families, and the Muslim community as a whole. It's not been a good 24 hours and discourse is shifting. Stay on target. What a fucking piece of shit. It's not about like, keep them, keep the victims in your heart, you know, keep the families in your heart, pray for them. No, it's keep the attention of the media focused on them because the discourse is shifting. Really? Really? This person is Muslim. They are a middle grade author. And she retweeted something that said, being positive is not the same thing as combating a threat. Like I genuinely appreciate all the I love Muslims, celebrate Muslims posts, but it's not lack of lovability that's killing us. It's an international system of violence that needs to be consciously named and dismantled. I don't mean to disparage anyone's goodwill efforts here. I truly do appreciate everyone's intent, but after a while, some of these celebrations start to feel like us having to prove we're human and normal and don't deserve to be shot. Please just let your conversations be guided by the fact that 0% of the problem here is that Muslims exist in the West and that 100% of the problem is that murderous bigots do. Oh, and then someone linked this fucking toxic positivity thing that's been going around. So examples of toxic positivity are, you'll get over it. Just be positive. Think happy thoughts. Never give up. Just be happy. I mean, like, I get it. Like, those are dick things to say, but the idea that you've given it this name, like toxic positivity, everything's fucking toxic, except for femininity. Because if you talk about toxic femininity, feminists are going to get real fucking mad at you. My Twitter feed is like full of everyone exclaiming over the fact that semi-automatic weapons will be banned in New Zealand. This person tweeted, wow, do they even try thoughts and prayers? The issue is more complicated than that. And these hot takes are just so fucking annoying. Oh God, someone that I do know in real life retweeted a tweet saying, I wanna punch every single right-wing pundit who says, don't give the bad guy a platform. Don't publish his manifesto. He just parroted what you've said for 15 years straight. There's nothing original in his manifesto. It's exactly what you believe and exactly what you said. I hate this lazy bullshit. We're like, I can almost guarantee that this person would be super upset if people are like painting the left with this broad strokes brush and like, oh, this is just exactly what you people all believe. Yet they just do the same fucking shit and they don't care. Of course she writes for Jezebel. Her Twitter bio says she's a Christian who refuses to behave. And her pinned tweet is, go to and tie that leftist churches and make progressive Christianity a force to be reckoned with. We can be as powerful as conservative evangelicalism. I recommend the United Church of Christ. Good Lord. My DMs are always open to gush about the UCC. Don't hashtag empty the pews, change where you sit. Don't leave religion, just come to ours. Life hack, when a dude is hitting on you, immediately start talking about how many cats you have. I don't know, what if he's a cat person? Maybe he wants to come over and hang out with all your cats. What are you gonna do then, bitch? Someone I know retweeted this. We now have an entire subcategory of white nationalist house of worship attacks, a Sikh temple in Wisconsin, a Christian church in Charleston, South Carolina, a Jewish synagogue in Pittsburgh, a Muslim mosque in Christchurch. But sure, the problem is just a few people. Okay. And when people point out like things done by Muslim extremists, people are just like, oh, why are you talking about that? That's racist, et cetera, et cetera. You turn that logic right back around when it comes to Muslim extremist attacks, even though that also happens. And yes, it is a small subsection of the Muslim population. Just like this is a very, very small subsection. What do you mean? Like, how is it disputable? Like, oh, it's just a few people. You literally just named like four incidents. 
So those were carried out by four different people, four out of the entire population of the world of white people or even the world of American white people. The only role suitable for white people is to act as race traitors to whiteness and to dismantle it, this hollow, false, hideous thing, malleable and rigid at once, this edifice of cruelty built around and for us. Oh God. And she said, everyone responding to this tweet can read this instead and linked an opinion piece from the New York Times called What is Whiteness? And then an image with a balloon that says betray whiteness with a black widow hanging from it. The responses are great. Someone replied, shut the fuck up, blue check. And someone else replied, it's okay to be white. Oh God. One of my actual friends retweeted this. The notion that keeping people, children some of them, from watching a live snuff film produced by a media savvy sociopath amounts to censorship is like arguing that to do so hinders the killer's freedom of expression. Keeping people from watching a live snuff film is censorship because someone is making that judgment call about what people are or are not allowed to consume information wise. So many people have been tweeting about the fact that being able to see something like that, to choose to watch it, is helpful for them to drive home the value of life that it's not like in the movies it's not like on tv to see that visceral reality most people who are, who are making the critique are just wary of a slippery slope okay now you're saying that we can't have this snuff film what are you censoring next let's take a scroll down my friend's feed shall we I still can't get over how very different our lives would be right now if people with power had taken Gamergate seriously. Ooh, it's a thread. So many shooting slash movements came from those depths. GG set the pattern. We told you we were seeing it because we were the initial victims. We were ignored. I've unfortunately seen bits of the Christchurch shooters manifesto and it's full of memes. How many journalists slash law officials be able to identify them, understand the context, know what they're dealing with? Memes, 4 slash 8chan, YouTube, etc. These are tried and true tactics at this point and GG set them. The guy said, that he is trying to cause strife. He wants to start a culture war, a real war with real violence. He wants to turn people against each other. So he's saying the shit that he said in his manifesto to start shit. And like, what does not taking Gamergate seriously mean? Because a lot of people took it seriously. Fucking Anita Sarkeesian was like testifying in front of Congress. That's pretty serious. Another retweet. You got white sons, nephews. If you've got a white male teen in your life and you haven't put your hands on his shoulders, looked him dead in the eye, and explained very sincerely why white supremacist YouTubers are poison and are to be ignored, you are failing him. I love like half of these tweets. Like the next tweet is something about like how they're getting all this pushback. Like this one says, reminder about the one blessing of Twitter, which is the mute this conversation option. I have done this. Like so many people are like, oh, I muted this. And I'm like, okay, you obviously said it on Twitter because you wanted a response. Otherwise you would have just texted it to your friends and told them to, you know, put their hands on the shoulders of all the white boys that they know and tell them about the danger of white supremacist YouTubers. Of course, they probably think white supremacist YouTubers are like PewDiePie or even like Ben Shapiro or like Paul Joseph Watson or something. Oh God, so this is like a legit editor. <laughs> of sci-fi fantasy. Looking for a couple of sensitivity readers for a contemporary dark fantasy slash horror set in northern small town Georgia. Readers would need to ID as black, cis male, and queer, be familiar with that region's culture, and be horror fans. Details attached, please boost. Thanks all. And then here we have the sensitivity reader request in full. I have a request for a sensitivity reader for a contemporary dark fantasy slash horror novel set in small town northern Georgia. The author has lived in the region for most of his life, but would like a temperature check about characterization since he identified as white and non-binary, and the book contains several black characters of various gender and sexual identities. Ideally, the reader would be familiar with local culture and gay male culture and is a fan of horror. If interested, please email me for further details. This is real life. Like, I could do a whole video about sensitivity readers and I probably should, but just so you can see, this is real. Oh, here's an example of a tweet where people just have to mention white people for like no reason, because they're talking about the literature GRE and how it's kind of stupid. No, they can't just stop there. It's not just about that. It's about the whiteness. My MA student didn't know what the literature GRE was, so I had to break it to her that it meant memorizing the plot summaries of everything ever written by white people. The look in her eyes spoke volumes. Seriously, PhD institutions, do we need the lit GRE? Ugh. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. Thank you for watching. I am very appreciative of the few subscribers that I have. I don't really care about the numbers. I've appreciated the interactions that I've had so far and I encourage you guys to continue to comment and I hope to have more content for you very soon.